Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's debate. My name is Helen Mandu Bennett, and I'm the chairman. And Aisha Rosario is the timekeeper. The adjudicator is Mr. Morton. The topic of this debate is that the Editorial Trail Sled Dog Race should be permanently cancelled. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Adelaide High School. Uh, the negative team seated to my left is from the two girls. The neck, uh, where am I? <laughs> I can't <even> this. <laughs> the speaking time for this debate is five minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time. Ding. Ding the bell. Good. And a double bell will sound at the speaking time. A continuous bell may be rung 30 seconds after the speaking time, in which case the speaker must sit down immediately. <laughs> Please ensure that your mobile phones and other electric devices are switched off. <clears throat> Great. Okay, I declare this debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker, Imogen Rearing. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for this debate is that the Iditarod Trail sled dog race should be permanently cancelled. We, the affirmative team, define the topic as referring to the approximately 1,600 kilometre long dog sled race that has been held every March since 1973 from Anchorage to Nome in Alaska. In 2018, there were 67 mushers, mushers being the people on the sleds, who each has a team of dogs. We define permanently cancelled as meaning that the race will be banned from taking place ever again, making the 2018 Iditarod the last one. We will persuade you that the statement is true. Today's first speaker, I'll be talking to you about the danger, pain and cruelty that the sled dogs undergo during the race. I'll also discuss how the dogs don't get a say in whether or not they compete. Our second speaker, Byron, will be talking about how the Iditarod is ethically wrong and about the cruelty and abuse that the dogs face outside of the race. We'll also discuss how dangerous the race is for humans who participate in it. Our third speaker will, will rebut and some of our team case. This evening I'll discuss three points. My first point is that the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race is extremely dangerous for the dogs involved. According to a report published in the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine, over half the dogs who start the race don't make it across the finish line, and 81% of those who do have lung damage. According to the Sled Dog Action Coalition, there has been at least one dog death in almost all of the Iditarod races. 15 to 19 dogs were reported to have died during the first race. By 1997, the Anchorage Daily News reported that at least 107 dogs have died in the Iditarod. In the years since that report, 35 more dogs have died, bringing the grand total of dogs reported to have died in the Iditarod to at least 142. And those are only the deaths that occurred during the race and that were reported. According to the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA for short, in 2013, five-year-old sled dog Dorado was smothered under a snowdrift and died of asphyxiation. Three-year-old Kate was allegedly beaten and kicked to death by her musher because she sat down and refused to get back up. This year, three-year-old Nash was hit and killed by a snowmobile. The list goes on and on. Countless other dogs have died from acute pneumonia, being stomped by moose, hypothermia and exertional myopathy, which is a nice way of saying the dogs were forced to run until they died. A veterinarian who studied dogs used in the Iditarod rod found that 50 to 70% of the dogs who enter the race are affected by exercise-induced stomach disease. These dogs typically show no symptoms until the condition becomes life-threatening and they start to bleed internally, vomit or simply choke and die. There's such a thing as too much exercise. According to Peter, one witness of the race lodged a complaint after seeing that one of the dogs was being dragged along covered in snow and appeared dead. They yelled out to the driver, but he refused to stop. All this evidence that I've shown you proves that the Iditarod is totally barbaric and results in countless dogs dying brutal deaths, one of the many reasons that the race should be permanently cancelled. Now to my second point, that the Iditarod is torturous and cruel for the sled dogs. Now, it's no secret that the Iditarod is physically demanding for the dogs, but a lot of people fail to realise just how brutal it really is. The sled dogs are forced to run the equivalent of four marathons every day for over a week, while pulling an incredibly heavy sled. While doing this, they burn over 12,000 calories a day. To put this into perspective, a human only burns around 2,600 calories when running a marathon. If you've ever run a marathon, then try to imagine that exhaustion times almost five, and you'll have an idea of the pain each of those dogs feels after just the first day. These statistics show how insanely torturous and cruel the trail is. On top of this, the temperatures during the race are below freezing and the terrain is rough. 
According to Peter, it's common for the dog's paws to bleed as they're forced to pull their mushroom sleds. My third and final point is that the sled dogs don't have a say in whether or not they compete. It's simply not possible to ask them. These dogs never agreed to risk their lives and run in an inhumane and insanely painful race for the sole purpose of ghoulish human entertainment. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the Idisha Road Trail Sled Dog Race is undoubtedly dangerous and inhumane for the dogs involved. And, according to Peter, the swiftest and most effective way to end this apparent cruelty is to put an end to the race itself. Thank you. I come from the first negative speaker, Nahal Manil. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's debate. We, as the negative team, certainly believe that the Iditarod race should not be permanently cancelled. Firstly, I would like to start off by defining a few terms that underpin this topic. Permanently. According to Oxford Dictionaries, it is in a way that lasts or remains unchanged indefinitely for all time. Therefore, we must be clear that permanent in this case would be, would be, seen, and would be seen to an end to this race for all time. Cancelled. According to the dictionaries.com, it is decide or announce that a planned event will not take place. Therefore, we must understand that cancelled in this context would mean that this race thus will not take place. As the first negative speaker, the points I will be discussing are, will be talking about are the history of the race, the types of dogs eligible for the race, and the production gears needed for dogs. Next, our second negative speaker will discuss the culture of the race in Alaska and how the cancellation could lead to a higher risk for dogs. Finally, our third speaker will conclude our arguments and rebut the affirmative team. The affirmative speaker has said, the affirmative speaker has said that the dogs are being harmed. They could, instead, they are being brutally, they said that they are being brutally harmed. There could be alternatives rather um, than just penalty cancel. People have a close culture to this race. Also, the vets are also there to present at the time because it is their job and duty to prevent injury and death. We acknowledge the fact that this event has caused harm to dogs, but this does not mean we are siding with animal cruelty. Rather, we are saying that there is no need to fully cancel the race as these dogs are bred for these conditions. So rather than canceling the event, a closer look at the rules and regulations may be a fairer decision. Now on to my first point. I would like to talk about the history and long-standing tradition of this race. 
According to the official Aditarod website, this is more than just a race. It is the spirit of Alaska. The race is tributed to Alaska's history and what the role of the dog sleds are played. Throughout the years, the dogs played an important part in throughout the, in through the villages and all throughout Alaska. The dogs would export mail and supplies to other parts of Alaska and in return, they would bring back gold. These examples are a part of Alaska's colorful history. This shows, that, uh, this shows us that this is more than just a race. Reddington had two reasons for organizing the long distance Iditarod race. To save the sled dog culture in Alaskan Huskies, which were being phased out of existence due to, due to introduction of snow, snowmobiles in Alaska. And to preserve the historical Iditarod trail between Severed and Nome. These reasons were his life's work. This has been quoted from the official Iditarod website. Also, an article found on alaskacenters.gov, the history of this race dates back before the European and Russian influence. The trail was first actually used for trade and travel between countries. Later, it was known for sending mail correspondence through the support of dog sleds. The Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race was first run in 1973. My second point is that an article found on National Geographic website says that only the northern dog breeds like Siberian Huskies, Alaskan Huskies, and Alaskan Malamutes are allowed to participate in the race. This rule was implemented in the early 1990s after Mosher Josh Sutter entered, entered the 1988 competition with European Poodles as his dog setting team. Now, to my third point, it must be clarified that safety is a major priority during the course of this event. According to TurningHeadKennels.com, all dogs are required to wear protective, and protective gear and many vets are located across the trail to ensure that these dogs stay safe. Some protective gear being booties, dog jackets, and dog wraps. The purpose of these booties is to prevent the dogs from getting cuts on their feet or from getting snow being caught up in between their toes. The booties are replaced every run as they only last about 60 to 70 miles and on an average about 4 to 5,000 booties are used throughout the race. Looks like the dogs are spending more on footwear than we do. In conclusion, we believe that by permanently cancelling this event, we are not only taking away the joy that comes from this event, but we are also taking away a big tradition from people, from people who are native to Alaska. So tell me ladies and gentlemen, do we really want to snatch a culture away? Do we really want to steal the joy people gain from this? Or will this still be thought of, thought of just a, a race? Thank you. Call upon the second affirmative speaker, Byron Ashwood Smith. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is the Iditarod Trail sled dog race should be permanently cancelled. We, the affirmative team, believe that this statement is indisputably correct. Our first speaker stated that the barbaric race forces dogs into exceedingly strenuous exercise that they often fall victim to. I will be talking about two crucial points. 
the humans involved are affected by the austere conditions, and I will prove that the Iditarod race is unethical regarding the treatment of innocent dogs. The first negative speaker has tried to tell you that due to the race's long history, cancelling it would be breaking tradition. Just because this race has been around for a long, long time doesn't mean it should continue. Putting an end to this race now would save dogs from dying and impact the negative culture of dog racing. The culture is already changing as sponsors are beginning to pull their sponsorships, proving their support is dwindling. There are other types of races that could be implemented, such as human sled races, where people could dress up into costumes like the one held in Lowell, Massachusetts. The first negative speaker has also tried to tell you that there are already lots of restrictions in place that keep the dogs safe. However, restrictions and regulations can only do so much. As long as the race is in place, there will always be those who take advantage of the animals through means of doping or cruelty. If the cancellation of the race would save just one animal life, it would be worth it. The rules of the race state that some deaths are unpreventable. However, this race shouldn't in induce unpreventable deaths in the first place. Now onto my first argument. The Iditarod dog sledding race is eminently hazardous to the humans involved. The conditions of the race are incredibly physically imposing to the humans leading the dogs. The race is initiated in the beginning weeks of spring as winter begins to subside. However, these conditions are still intolerable, with freezing temperatures ranging from 10 to negative 30 degrees Celsius. Depending on how cold the winter has been, the racing track may be ridden with thick snow or melting ice. In 1984, Susan Butcher, an experienced musher, and her racing team fell through the ice into piercingly cold water. She was only saved after her dogs managed to pull the team out. Also, Butcher was forced to fatally shoot a rampaging moose in order to ensure the safety of both herself and her dogs. In addition to this, mushers can only support each other, otherwise they risk receiving a penalty. This can incentivize people to do whatever it takes to win, no matter how risky. The nature of the race itself is perilous, with many racegoers putting their lives on the line, proving that this race should be cancelled. Now onto my second point. Using the dogs to race is simply unethical and immoral. According to a report published by PETA, dog doping has not been a one-time occurrence, and the history behind the Iditarod race is burdened by extreme cruelty. Dogs have been found, drugs have been found within some of the dog's bloodstreams, including antacids and opioids, such as tramadol, which are used for the management of excruciating pain. Indirectly, the mushers are acknowledging that the dogs are in pain, but are still forcing these poor animals to continue racing. Imagine this, neck wounds, starving newborn puppies, and shivering dogs. This is the reality of life for sled dogs when they're not being forced to run thousands of kilometers during the Iditarod race. However, this treatment is considered entirely legal in Alaska where the government ignores the treatment of innocent animals. According to Alaskan law, the sledding dogs are livestock, exempting them from welfare laws that protect our household pets. In 1991, Frank Winkler, a two-time racer of the Iditarod track, was found with a crate full of dead puppies in his truck. Winkler bludgeoned them with the blunt side of an axe. So what happens to the dogs that are deemed unfit for racing? The ideal racing age for sledding dogs is two to three years old. But after a few short years of racing, these dogs eventually retire. After their retirement, if the dogs are not being adopted, they may be sent to kennels. Some of the dogs may be sent to the Kroblunik Kennel, which is the largest tourist dog sledding operation in the United States of America. To the public, this might be the perfect retirement home for sledding dogs, but the testimonies of ex-employees have revealed something much darker. In 2013, owner Dan McEachin was charged with animal cruelty after reports emerged that dogs were routinely shot in the head and buried. The manager at the time stated, this is just part of the circle of life for the dog sled dog. This proves that the treatment of sledding dogs is routinely unethical and inhumane, and the Iditarod race should be cancelled. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, mushers are pushing their dogs to the brink and beyond for a cash prize. The Iditarod is not the race extraordinaire described by the event organisers, but a slaughterhouse for innocent animals. The treatment of the dogs is completely immoral, and the doping scandals prove that the race must be cancelled. Thank you.
call from the second negative speaker, Samyana Ariyeja. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We, the negative team, certainly believe that the Iditarod Trail sled dog race should not be permanently cancelled. I would now like to rebut the other team. They said that in this race, people will do wrong. However, people will do wrong in every situation. So will we have to reassess every activity that we do? They said that people, dogs, are being harmed in this race. We acknowledge that, and this is why we said that there can be alternatives. We can have a risk analysis um, than just permanently canceling this race. People, because people have a very close culture to this race and it has a long history. They said um, the dogs run for four marathons every day. However, they provided no proof of this. They also compared the dogs and humans calorie. Uh, however, you can't compare it as they have different body structures and potentials. Um, they said that dogs don't have a say in this race. However, even in police, police and military dogs, they don't have a say. So will we have to reassess that as well? Um, and then they said that their lives are put in danger in that. But same in police and military, which I will expand in my argument. We also believe that they're slightly stepping into emotional territory. So they need to look at a wider range of points. First of all, as we've already talked about the rich history of the race, you should also know, ladies and gentlemen, that people are closely connected to this race because of their culture. According to the Alaska Center's website, the, Ad uh, the Iditarod race was first run in 1973 began and begins each year on the first weekend of March. Throughout time, people from Alaska started making it part of their culture and will train their dogs all year just to be part of this race. So if we do permanently cancel this ra race, we'll be wiping out a large um, element of Alaskan culture. We, as a negative team, believe that it is definitely not right to permanently cancel an event that people are so closely attached to. My next major point is that if we were to permanently cancel the Iditarod race, we actually run the risk of potentially putting dogs at a greater risk. Let me explain. What I mean by this is if we permanently cancel this event, some dedicated fans or competitors might take this opportunity to pursue this race underground. Now, this doesn't literally mean underground. What it means is without permission, uh, supervision or illegally. A similar example to this is cockfighting. Cockfighting is the sport of setting two roosters to fight each other. From 2002, all states in Australia made cockfighting illegal. However, according to RSPCA, between 2012 to 17, there has been approximately 60 illegal um, cockfighting incidents found in Australia alone. This shows that people will pursue their passions, especially if it's banned without compromise. We, as a negative team, fear that if the Iditarod race was permanently cancelled without, without consideration, we run the risk of a similar situation happening. This is, majority, this is majorly problematic because if pursued underground, sled racing could not be closely governed or monitored like it is now. Officials and professionals would not be on board and therefore the risk to dogs would be far greater. This is certainly not what we want. For my next point, I would like to discuss other dangers that, that dogs are put in every day. If we were to side with the affirmative team here and permanently cancel this event on the grounds of danger to dogs, we feel that it would be necessary to examine other contents that pose a risk to dogs. dogs. If we're going to say that dogs are being injured through this race and it's unfair, we should be looking at a wider stance and looking at other forms of service dogs. Dogs have been used in the military, for example, since World War I and the police since the 1900s. Ladies and gentlemen, police and military dogs are put in dangerous situations almost every day of their lives. Both police and military dogs have dangerous roles in their workforces. According to the American Kennel Club website, um, the police dogs play the role of catching criminals and searching for drugs, and the military sniff out explosions, look for enemies, and search for the person responsible for the explosion. This information was collected on the United States War Dog Association. In almost all these situations, the dogs are the first ones to put their lives on the line to protect their human partners. They put their lives on risk every day, but we're arguing about the Iditarod race, which only lasts for two to three weeks. If we were to permanently cancel the race on the basis that these dogs that are bred for these conditions will have their lives put in danger, then we should also be considering the other for we should also be considering doing the same for other dogs. My last point is both a proposal and a point. Rather than simply cancelling the race and throwing the baby out of the bathwater here, 
We could simply find alternatives like a shorter trail, more safety gear, consideration of the time, or perhaps an uh, alternate lo location. Compromise should be considered before a permanent ban, and therefore we believe that the Iditarod sled dog race should not be permanently cancelled. Thank you for listening. Call upon the third affirmative speaker, Madeline Coates. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to ask you a question. What price do we put on entertainment? The Iditarod Trail dog sled race sees gorgeous canines bounding through the Alaskan snow with sleds and mushers in tow, but it comes with a cost, a cost these hundreds of hounds must pay. We, the affirmative team, believe that these dogs should not face this expense and affirm, as the topic states, that the Iditarod Trail dog sled race should be permanently cancelled. First, on to my rebuttal. Both the first and second speakers discussed the race's cultural underpinnings. While these traditions are true, they are inconsequential, as the race no longer conveys its original intentions in its current execution. We mustn't further perpetuate this cruel race not because of what it was or what it previously stood for, but because of what it has become. What it's evolved into doesn't, doesn't reflect its origins. It has become a commercial sport, purely for entertainment. Just because it's been going on for a long time doesn't mean it should have to continue. If anything, we need to put a stop to the race sooner rather than later, before it can escalate any further and to prevent future harm to dogs. This first speaker also discussed the safety precautions involved in the race. However, these evidently aren't doing their job anywhere near well enough. All the dogs that cross the finish line with bruised and bloody paws, infections, fractures and breathing problems, or, or worse still, not at all, indisputably demonstrate that these dogs are not protected enough. Finally, she claimed that the fact that only certain dogs can compete is beneficial to the race and the dogs that compete. But the Iditarod is designed around animal abuse. No matter how comfortable the competing dogs may be to the race's conditions, they cannot be accustomed to the abuse, excessively strenuous training and overexertion the race condemns them to. They endure these conditions because they have become commodities, machines that are abandoned and replaced when obsolete. The Iditarod race is no different for allowing certain dogs to compete, as all competitors must suffer from these abhorrent conditions. The second negative speaker also purported that the race may continue underground if it was cancelled. However, the Iditarod, the Iditarod race is too involved to occur beyond the gaze of officials. Additionally, cancelling the race owing to animal cruelty would set a precedent for potential mushing pursuits. This is something the truly passionate, who would be the ones who would run underground mushing, would follow. 
She also claimed that our arguments were too emotionally supported, but the race by nature warrants this response, as its practices are, re are realistically shockingly inhumane. As for the dangers police dogs endure, these dangers, though present and worthy of acknowledgement, are, they are, are not as severe as those faced by the Iditarod trail dogs, as the police dogs are providing a service, and they have a purpose, while the Iditarod dogs suffer for no more than human entertainment. Now to recap our team case. Our first speaker revealed what lies beyond the Iditarod race's deceptive facade. Not the honourable smiles and wagging tails it pretends to be, but a brutal, ruthless and exploitative slaughterhouse dogs are forced into without a say. Our second speaker subsequently discussed the dangers the Iditarod race poses to the mushers, as well as why callously condemning innocent canines to such a pitiful fate is ethically deplorable. Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, it is often said that dogs are a man's best friend. But who forces their best friend on a gruelling and per perilous thousand mile trek for the mere prospect of profit and triumph? Who subjects their favourite pal to powerlessness in the face of abuse and neglect? And who treats their most cherished companion like a toy, ephemerally entertaining, and once its novelty fades into obsolescence, abandoned with no compunction? The answer is the Iditarod Trail dog sled race. Hence, we must terminate this macabre competition to spare man's best friend from perpetually paying the price. Thank you. Call upon the third negative speaker, Brooke Burns. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, chairman, timekeeper, and adjudicator. I would like to conclude this debate by rebutting the affirmative team's points and summarizing my team's the negative team's arguments. The opposing team is affirmative that the Iditarod sled dog race must be permanently cancelled. However, we believe this not be so. They have stated that many dogs are injured and die. However, there are many vets to prevent injury and death, and I'm sure these numbers would be much higher if it wasn't for these people. However, they also stated they do not do their jobs properly, and this is why we propose change, possibly with more vets or more regulated staff. They also stated that trainers can be abusive. However, there was no proof of this that we have been able to find. And trainers could be more closely monitored and have checks for abusive history on the regular. 
They could also be trained in public areas with other trainers to ensure that this doesn't happen. While we agree that just because Iditarod is a tradition doesn't mean it is right, it can be changed and this is why one of our main arguments is why we propose change, which I shall reinforce later. We cannot ban everything just because people do wrong no matter what. Regulation and public training with others instead, again as I said before, can help with this. And if the people that compete in this competition know that it is bad for them, why do they volunteer in the first place? And as for mooses, the race can be fenced off or guarded um, to prevent them from interrupting the race. Police dogs are killed all the time, so why is it okay for them to attack Iditarod for doing this when they are clearly in just as much suffering and pain? Dogs are killed in police, so if this is an argument, um, we must reconsider every other dog's role in police as they are put down also. This is also why the race shouldn't be as rigorous. Dogs shouldn't have to die if the race isn't as life-threatening. Would you rather see a dash hound or a husky in Iditarod? Because they are stating that the breed does not matter. Finally, they stated that Iditarod dogs do not serve a purpose. However, they are keeping a broad tradition alive and police dogs are both helping humanity and protecting us. And finally, just to finish off, I think we must be arguing with real facts and not emotions. And while we may feel sorry for the dogs, we must look further into this topic. While we acknowledge that some racing dogs have been injured in the past, we the negative team do not find this a viable argument to permanently cancel the Iditarod race. Of course we don't believe in causing harm, but there are some potential alternatives that may find a safe way to compete. We believe the competition could be altered slightly, perhaps become a shorter race with more breaks or potentially be held less often. This would assist in preventing the dogs from being greatly injured and allow time for them to rest, recover and train for the next race. That being said, we would like to reiterate that the dogs competing in this race are Alaskan Malamutes, Siberian Huskies and Alaskan Huskies, which have been historically bred in the snowy mountainous environment Iditarod is situated in. These dogs can easily withstand this environment. They were literally made for it with their thick coats and strong stamina. Plus, these dogs were originally used for running far distances and assisting humans with trade and travel. Irrespective of this, we must also emphasise that it is compulsory for the competing dogs to wear special shoes and protective equipment to help prevent injury. Like I said, the numbers of this would be a lot higher if it wasn't for this and the vets on board. There is also a large number of vets bordering the race to help monitor health and well-being, not to mention the fact that these dogs have compulsory, compulsory breaks. You can't say there are no regulations. If we're going to complain about dogs which were bred to run and pull sleds, it would also be necessary to look at other dogs that are put in far worse situations. As mentioned before, police dogs are trained from a young age to defend against danger and bomb sniffing dogs are trained to find bombs, which obviously has many risks. Committees like Peter question the annual Iditarod race, yet we allow other dogs to be put in far worse situations on a daily basis. Furthermore, which greatly concerns our team, if our dinner order is cancelled, we run the risk of becoming an underground sport. We know that when cockfighting was banned, there was a boom in illegal activity involving the sport. This would pose an even greater risk to dogs and competitors as there would be little governance, supervision and regulation. Because our dinner order is such a large part of Alaskan culture, its permanent withdrawal will take away this culture and fans of the sport will have to resort to doing it illegally. Simply banning Iditarod without providing a compromise or change will have a much more adverse effect. Adjudicator, ladies and gentlemen, for these reasons, we believe it is wrong to cancel the annual Iditarod sled dog race forever. We, the negative team, are certain this race, a race with such rich tradition that uses suitably bred dogs, should remain tradition as long as rules are in place to protect all involved. Thank you.